Uh, repressive tolerance. We see it in action all day, every day, and I thought it would be good to go through a bunch of examples of it in order that you will be able to see it and understand it for yourself. Now, uh, Thomas and I went through uh, Herbert Marcuse's famous essay, Repressive Tolerance, uh, in detail in this premium podcast, which you can sign up to lotuses.com to watch. Uh, but the the basic message is that they un Marcuse and his students understood that things are tolerated by regimes, and this is what he called active tolerance. And what he desired is for active tolerance to be rescinded from the right wing, because as far as he was concerned, it was the left wing that was going to get us to a perfect form of freedom, and in which everything would be wonderful, and it was the right that was holding that back. And so this active tolerance is in the, the ability for them to speak freely, to associate freely, to have their own uh, organizations and institutions. This all has to be rescinded. So when the, the cutting edge of the law falls on someone who has to be judged, it harms the right and helps the left. And this is what repressive tolerance is about. And you can... I sorry, I just I can't get over how every single time we talk about someone who's come up with an idea on the left, it's usually just what if we just destroy our enemies? Yeah, like what if we're just evil? What either physically or, yeah. or with state power to make sure they can't speak? Yes. Just every time. That's that's all the idea they have. Yeah. And you, you see this all the time. I mean, this is a great uh, great tweet by Leo, uh, where he, if you can just bring up these pictures, you can see here. Trump is suing Facebook, Twitter, and Google for violating his First Amendment rights by keeping him off their platforms. Someone should remind him they're private companies to which the First Amendment doesn't apply. Well, for a start, they're not. They're publicly traded companies. They're not private companies, Robert. Uh, but as you can see, this is in uh, June or July 2021. Fast forward a year, just one year. Musk and his apologists, I believe they're called musketeers, uh, say if, his, if consumers don't like what he does with Twitter, they can go elsewhere. But where else could consumers go to post short messages which reach millions of people other than Twitter? The free market increasingly reflects the demands of big money. You just, it's the unremitting hypocrisy that makes Defiant L's and other, platform, uh, other um, accounts like them so popular in the first place. It's just so naked. Good when we do it, bad when you do it. The active tolerance has been rescinded from you and is applied only to us. And you see this in every aspect of our pub public lives. I mean, like, let's talk about color washing, whitewashing and blackwashing of things. Go to the next one. So you may remember, this, this is just the best example, but there have been lots of examples. And I'm not saying that Hollywood isn't guilty of this either. Uh, this was Exodus Gods and Kings, as you can see. Very uh, Caucasian. Patrick Bale, is it? Or what's his name? Christian Bale, sorry, not Patrick Bale. Uh, Christian Bale playing, you know, some Egyptian uh, pharaoh or Israelite, whatever. And so they, they complain about this in this old article, which is fair. I mean, Exodus Gods and Kings looks a lot worse since it's actually set during a specific historical time period and yet includes an impressive number of white Americans and British actors playing Egyptian and Israelite characters. And you say, yeah, that's totally fair. If you wanted uh, to represent a historical story with fidelity, and let's let's pretend that this is representing historical events, uh, you wouldn't do that, right? And so they no, had... you'd black up the white actors. <laughs> well, <laughs> well in instantly, they actually, style. Th there was actually another... Uh, I should have got this for this segment. There was actually another one where an Egyptian actor was chosen to play this pharaoh. But the thing is, Egyptians aren't sub-Saharan Africans. No. And they're, they're Mediterranean, so some of them can have quite light skin. And there was a big complaint going like, oh, look, they've whitewashed this character. It's like, dude, that, that's a guy from Egypt. What are you talking about? But uh, but in this case, these aren't well. That on the right isn't a person from Egypt, and so uh, and and they literally say this to get an idea of what this casting implies. Imagine the outcry if a major Hollywood studio released a King Arthur film starring Idris Elba, John Cho, and Lucy Liu, only uh, with only one or two Knights of the Round Table being played by white actors. How long is it? Do you think we have to wait until that happens? Yeah. Well, it turns out it was five years or so, or oh, six years. Uh, well, well, pretty much, because now uh, you've got the sequel to Vikings, called Vikings Valhalla. Vikings. <laughs> oh, come on. That was too easy. I mean, it, it really is. <laughs> and, and, of course, you get none of the outrage, none of the complaints, oh, none of it. It's no. just so naked. White guy is that? No, that's bad. Black woman is that? That's good. You know, And it's just like, look, this is just so obvious. And it... it but even as you say, like European to Egyptian, there's not too much of a difference there in the sense no, of, really. you know, they're still very white they're, they're, compared to sub Saharan Africa, right? Yeah. But English or, sorry, Swedish to, to sub Saharan African skin tone, quite a jump. It's not a, <sighs> well, it's as good as we can do. 
Yeah, <laughs> I mean it's it, it's it's done on purpose. Uh, so this uh, this is um, a, a woman called Caroline Henderson who's playing Jarl Hakon. Jarl. Jarl Hakon. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, sure she's so, going to make sure to pronounce it for historical accuracy's sake. Yes, a 10th or 11th century Viking chieftain. I mean, it just, it <laughs> stay on the picture, John, because it just looks ridiculous. Yeah. It's just, like, I can't believe she isn't embarrassed. Is she going to try and do an accent, at least? I don't know. I haven't seen it. I'm not I mean, why bother? I mean, why not yeah, just yeah, check why, your watch in yeah, the middle yeah. of the film? Just... Why, why not give us a Nigerian accent? Because why wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. Why not check your watch during the film? Why not, you know? Just wearing Ray-Bans throughout the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's you very know, sunny in Sweden. Put your Nike sweakers, sweet, uh, sneakers up on the, on the, on the set. <laughs> like, who cares? Like, what difference does it make? If you're going to pretend that this is the... I mean, Jarl Hakon was a man, right? He's a historical character. Wait, oh, so they haven't even got the hat? No, he was actually a historical character. It didn't click. Right? Well, that's the point. It's like, like they're like, well, look at this, you know, th this biblical representation, which we're going to assume represents real history. Well, this does represent real history, apparently. Uh, and so, like, Jarl Hackerton was a real man, uh, and he was not a black woman. Jarl, where should we invade England? Let me check TripAdvisor. I'll find out. <laughs> uh, so, but of course, not only race swapped, but gender swapped as well, as well, because of course, there's zero evidence of any female Viking rulers. Should we just say history swapped at this point? Yes. Like you just haven't do. bothered. Yes. But it's uh, it's fine when it's one way and it's bad when it's the other. And this is this goes beyond, of course, merely you know representation in movies and stuff this is just like the opening edge the thin edge of it because if it goes it goes straight into activism as well you remember the it's okay to be white uh posters that people were putting up it was just a printout extremely funny campaign and an extremely revealing one yes and it's the revealing nature of this that was the most important right this this was one in hampshire this happened ac across the uk a couple of times. Well, it happened across the Anglo world. It yeah, was, it did, yeah. It was Australia, but America, we'll, everywhere. But we'll focus again on the UK specifically. Right, This was in Hampshire. Uh, the Hampshire Constabulary was alerted to the posters uh, and they were being treated as a hate incident. Hate. Hate. Uh. I was just right. imagining the policeman literally shouting Nina out of his car because clearly he's special. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I can't comment on Hampshire Constabulary because they haven't arrested me yet. Uh, uh, but uh, a, a, a spokesperson uh, said they've arranged the posters to be removed because, good God, can't have that up. And uh, one resident said, these tactics are divisive and they have no place in today's world. Hashtag Black Lives Matter. They have, they're, they're tactics that are used to, deliberately, to divide deliberately by neo nazis groups and white supremacy groups uh this was started in the us but seen here in the uk right so they found a twitter user uh who could tell us about this uh but that's fine that's fine so it, you can't have it's okay to be a race you can't have that well you can that's, as long as it's not white well exactly mm. that's exactly what repressive tolerance is as we can go to the next one in edinburgh mysterious flyers were posted that said it's okay to be muslim and it's okay to be black crickets queen Cricket. That's, that's Not even stuff right there. No, 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 no. They were just like, well, these are mysterious flyers and no one can explain them. It's like, oh, well, who cares? What difference does it make? Oh, but you if it's a... this... like, there's no way they don't know. It, it, there's no way they can't know that we know as well, mm. right? We they must be able to see that we can see the hypocrisy of this, right? And so, and the thing is, in this article, it's great because they're like, we can't explain it. We can only assume it's a response to the "it's okay to be white" ones that were posted in Edinburgh, did, right? Did you ever see the interviews of uh, so there were flyers put up saying? Islam is right about women. Mm -hmm. And the responses from the local progressives were hilarious. This is definitely Islamophobic. Because they kept asking them and went, I don't know what it means. I don't know what it means. No idea. And then they got to a Muslim woman and she went, that's pretty, that's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I agree. Uh, but anyway, they say it's not known who's responsible for the production and distribution of the messages, not the hateful messages, not the incendiary, divisive, neo-Nazi messages, nothing like that, yep. just the messages, right? Uh, but it could be a response to the neo-Nazi related slogans which were spotted in Scottish cities such as Perth and Dundee this year the flyers bearing the slogan it's okay to be white appeared in the, and, and then the rest of the article is just it's bad say it's okay to be white it's like the it's, same font the same capitalization yep. the same you know everything yep. but it but one is neo-Nazi related and one isn't yep it's it's just so 
on the nose. Uh, John Swinney says, uh, who is the MSP, the member of Scottish Parliament for Persia North, says the atrocious stickers, referring to the white ones, uh, had no place oh, in else? Perth or any other part of our country. We must stand together to resist this unacceptable material. It's like, well, why can't you condemn the other one if that is not also racially divisive? Could you imagine being in the room? Like, he finishes that sentence and they go, can I have a comment about the black one, sir? I'd love to ask. I mean, what would he do? Just... They're fine. I mean, would he just be that blatant? Well, he'd I mean, have maybe, to. Maybe, yeah. What's he going to do? But anyway, so uh, and there are other things, like the Dave Chappelle was recently attacked by a man with a knife on stage uh, during his show. Things. Yeah, and, he, you know, thank, thankfully nothing bad happened to Chappelle, but the man was armed with a replica handgun that had a blade, a knife blade on the end of it. So he was armed with a dangerous weapon, and, of course, this attacker faced no charges because he's an online social media activist. Give the next one. You say, of course. Well, you, I say, of course, because his pronouns were they, them. Oh, well, fair enough. I mean, yeah. you know, do whatever you want you all the know. time, I guess. So. Uh, yeah, and so, you, the, you know, he had a long Twitter history of him posting stuff, and he had even threatened Chappelle saying, I'm coming for you next. And lo and behold, here he is. He was just meaning sexually, Your Honor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for some reason, uh, the George Gascon of uh, LA County uh, District uh, Attorney decided to, uh, the district attorney's office, decided not to press federal charges against him. Attacked a comedian on stage while in possession of a dangerous weapon, and it's like, yeah, well... It's not a real criminal. Yeah, he's not... Well, that's exactly it. Suddenly, this standard for, for the charge is incredibly high, you see. It's like, well, I mean, you We've know... We've got video evidence, uh, premeditated evidence yep. of him planning to do it. Um, an admission Hold. probably from him, if nothing else. Well, I mean, if that's not, if the Twitter I'm coming for you, Dave Chappelle, isn't yeah. an admission, uh, and he's but it's carrying just too tough a case. Home. Yeah, exactly. Well, th this is this is the thing. Like Gascon's office insisted Friday they wouldn't have been able to prosecute Lee on a felony charge because the video of the attack didn't show him brandishing the knife. It's like, oh well. Oh, fair enough. I mean, anyone yeah. could have been brandishing that knife. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, he, no, no, he wasn't brandishing the knife. He was just carrying it. So, oh right, okay. Well, that's 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 okay then. Uh, but if you were say, I don't know, they, they think he's planning to chop up vegetables with it later. Yeah, like, he's going to cut a tomato or something. Uh, but if you were around the capital on January the sixth, of course, you're in some serious trouble. These are the people who really deserve the federal charges. Um, prats, I would describe these as obvious prats who are dressed as gladiators and cavemen. <laughs> Actual prats. This is the greatest danger to our democracy. One of them who looks a lot like Sam Hyde, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. like, Sam Hyde yelling yeah. in Neanderthal noises. Didn't the... get away with it this time, I'm afraid. Um, <laughs> so yeah, this was uh, Aaron Mostofsky and Nathan Eintriken, uh, who were dressed as idiots as they uh, stormed the capital. They didn't actually storm anything according to the, uh, the charges filed against them. They're actually let in someone else had stormed it and they just wandered on in uh, and acted like idiots right but the the charge is felony charge of a civil disorder eight months in jail that's fair yeah that's fair isn't it like okay i guess misdemeanor charge of entering a restricted building and a theft so he stole someone's pen walked into a building he wasn't supposed to be in eight months in jail I mean, that's just wild to me. And the thing is, they both apologise for this, going, yeah, maybe we should have stayed outside. But it's where the priorities are at. Exactly. It's not about the crime here. It's crime. Crime is crime. Yep. But when crime occurs in a certain circumstance, mm -hmm. it's not investigated regardless of the evidence. But do you remember the Black Lives Matter activist who was also at this? And who got let off? Or the feds who just disappeared. Well, I don't expect the, the I don't expect the government to arrest the feds that they send in to disrupt these protests. Yeah, but there's also the point by Tucker, like uh, some of the people who are actually bashing it down for then mm -hmm. everyone else to walk in turned out to be feds. So it's like, well, it seems like there weren't actually that many people bashing stuff down. No, no, it doesn't. And these these two people, as far as we're aware, didn't bash anything down either. Um, but of course, you know, they get to go to jail for uh, one of them has got four to five days in prison with three years of probation, and the other one has got eight months in prison, I believe it is, uh, which seems like a deliberately punitive attempt to harm them. But of course, that's because they're right wing. If you're left wing and say, oh, I don't know, I mean, maybe there's a small thing going on in America at the moment in which the Supreme Court judges are making decisions about law and mobs of left-wing activists start harassing them at home, that's not a big deal. Is it? I'm sorry, this is embarrassing, yeah. I mean, in any reasonable country, you'd send the police and organise these people to be removed immediately. Well, especially as this is concretely illegal. 
Yeah. Right. So 100 protesters decided to go to Kavanaugh's home and. Do we, um, we call them protesters? Uh, Sorry, there's like these petty terrorists. Well, yeah, I think terrorist is a perfectly acceptable term. But Kavanaugh and Roberts, two Supreme Court justices, John Roberts and uh, Brett Kavanaugh, um, they they live about a mile away or half a mile away from each other. And so the protesters decided, yeah, what are we going to do? We're not happy about uh, the who who's the guy who wrote the um, ruling, but I mean, it doesn't matter. Uh, but they they decided we don't like the leak, and so we're going to go to their house, uh, their houses, and protest that side. Uh, quote from one or a local resident who helped organize the protest, quote, the time for civility is over, man. Being polite doesn't get you anywhere, says Lacey Wooten Holway. Sorry, when when did the left practice civility? I mean, that, that was a very brief window of time, probably back in the 80s or something, right? I think in, when campaigning for Bill Clinton, I suppose. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, the, but the point is, again, right, okay, these people have done that, okay. The institutions, you would think the presidency perhaps, would have a position on this, but it turns out they don't. They don't have any position on this at all. According to Jen Psaki, who I think is probably the official president, or the unofficial president of the United States, uh, a left-wing group called Ruth Centers, Ruth Bader Ginsburg also disagreed with Roe v. Wade, by the way, just in case you didn't know, uh, but uh, they published the home, they doxed, Six supreme, uh, the the six conservative justices, uh, and called them extremists. That's right, left wing extremists. Are like, hey, you're an extremist, right? So, what happens if you do this to a jury member in a court trial? Uh, the court, is, the the trial is um, prejudiced, isn't it? Yeah, and you get years in jail. Yes, because what you've done is tried to destroy the entire country. Yes, there in a, in a minor yeah. way. Well, uh, but doing this to the highest court in the land, that's. What well, they, what uh, well Je Jen Psaki has, uh, has a, an opinion on this. Look, I think the president's view is that there's a lot of passion, a lot of fear, a lot of sadness from many. I love the mouth of the president here. I've got so much right. passion, man. Yeah. <laughs> but many, many people across the country, what they saw on those leaked documents, we obviously want people's privacy to be respected. We want people to protest peacefully if they want to, to protest. That's certainly what the president's view would be. I love the way she's, she's giving us the, input, the opinion of Biden. Because, of course, Biden doesn't have an opinion. Uh, but there is a good reason why the presidency would have an opinion on this, and it's because it's against the law of the land to do this. If you can go to the next one, uh, quote, federal law prohibits picketing or parading in front of the home of a judge, juror, witness, or officer of the court under pain of up to one year in prison. You're not allowed to do it anywhere in the United States because it will prejudice the judicial system in favor of not being harassed and bullied by a mob. That's intimidation. Yes. Efforts to intimidate people within the legal system are an offence against judicial independence, a prerequisite to democracy. A key prerequisite to democracy. If protesters want to demonstrate outside the Supreme Court, that's fine. But going to a judge's neighbourhood and marching in front of his or her home is too far. It's a dangerous act of intimidation, which I agree. What did Chuck Schumer, the Senate Majority Leader, say? I'm sorry. Can we just reflect on a moment how yep. far America has fallen? Yeah, we to can. this level where we were like, well, maybe I don't know. We're, maybe we should be able to harass judges. At their house. You wander into the state, ca into the capital of the United States, which presumably is a publicly owned building. You, being a member of the public, technically owns it, uh, and walk around. That's eight months in jail. That's literally criminal disorder. Eight months in jail. You go and intimidate uh, the Supreme Court justices, and the left wing administration will say, "Well, yeah, that's okay. Passions are running high." They know what to tell you. It's Again, they like their Molotov cocktails. Oh, it's very passionate of them. Well. Literally, that seems to be what Chuck Schumer thinks, the Senate Majority Leader. He says, quote, I want to tell you, Justice Kavanaugh and Justice Gorsh, that you have unleashed a whirlwind and you will pay the price. You deserve it. I mean, that sounds like a threat. I mean, you deserve to be killed and your yes. house burnt down and your family murdered. I mean, that sounds like an active threat, though. You will pay the price. Yeah. Well, the, you've got a mob outside of the house yeah. with your family and you in, and then the Democrats say, you will pay the price. Yes. I'm sorry, what do, you, what do you think this speech is about? And this is a long history of the Democrat politicians in the last, like, 10 years being unbelievably incendiary anyway, I mean, obviously. The, but that's the thing. Even with America's huge protections on free speech, which is lovely, this might even cross the line according to the Supreme Court themselves. Yes. I mean, I, actually, that might be a crime, saying that you deserve it or you will pay the price. I mean, you've got a location, you've got a time period. I mean, it's deeply irresponsible either way. Yeah. But anyway, the point is, this is what the this is what repressive tolerance is: is to make sure that the people on your side are forever forgiven for their crimes, and the people on the other side are forever disproportionately punished for their crimes. Again, crimes, quote unquote, uh, and you can see it playing out every day in the United States.
If you appreciated that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters, you can go to lotuseaters.com to get access to all the premium content we have on the site, such as the premium hangouts we do sometimes, this one between Carl and Harry, on uh, Trans Regret. So that one's definitely premium. And if you want to follow what else Harry's putting out, you can follow him on Getter at at Harry Lotus Eater on Getter. Thank you and goodbye.